a sovereign. Perfect. Strange place to stow money. A sovereign. Perfect. Ha <laughs> ha! A sovereign. Elementary, my dear Holmes. What? This accursed statue is still here? I have asked Mrs. Hudson to remove it for us. Oh, what a mess! Strange place to stow money. Ha <laughs> ha! A sovereign! Elementary, my dear Holmes. A sovereign. Perfect. Strange place to stow money. Ha <laughs> ha! A sovereign. Elementary, my dear Holmes. Holmes's table for a Ooh, the adventure of the Colonel Gordon. Ha <laughs> ha! A sovereign. Elementary, my dear Holmes. How much for one of these turtles? The champion isn't within your means, chap. The loser will set you back ten sovereigns. No, I have nothing to ask him. While you wait, Watson, I need something big with which to catch the Lamagier. It's a rather large bird. This net would be perfect if it wasn't in such a pitiful state. I'll need some string to repair it. This net would be perfect if it... The 
and this string is perfect. I'll get to Here's your turtle, Holmes. Watson, you impress me. This specimen will be ideal. I need to find somewhere to put it down, Watson. Stand back, Watson, as we wait for our bearded friend to descend. I hope you'll be able to catch it on the first try, Holmes. Ginger would never forgive me. Ginger? Yes, the turtle. Of course, of course. This bird is apprehensive. I mustn't get... There's our starving friend, Watson, and the last paper. At last. I thought we'd never succeed. Now can we head back to our lodgings and sleep for part of the day? We have until this evening. We are heading back to Baker Street, Watson, but not to sleep. We have time for a meal, and then we must make haste to the next location that we will ascertain with the help of these messages. Uh, but I'm done for, Holmes. As Ashila said, I think the slain care little if they sleep or rise again. Come, Watson, make haste. 
I can no longer take it, regardless where these papers that were found on those damn birds at the Tower of London lead, you'll be going without me, Holmes. Plus, this business cannot remain secret much longer, and Scotland Yard would like to take over the case again, and I would gladly give it to them. You are correct, Watson. Even if Chief Warder Smith sent two-thirds of his men on holiday to minimize the risk of leaks, the authorities would be aware with very little delay that something was afoot in London, and they would want to take over the case, as you say. But Scotland Yard is once again facing a strong opponent and is up against a resounding failure. There is no question of my stepping down or even thinking of resting, not while England is being menaced by Arsene Lupin. As you wish, Holmes. If only I had known that one day you would be giving me lessons in patriotism. Now, try to figure out the meaning of these messages. But how, Holmes? They are illegible, Watson. But as Lupin seems to be a magician when the mood strikes him, it may well be a conjuring trick. Inspected everything, it would appear. Now, try to figure out the meaning of these messages. But how, Holmes? They are illegible, Watson. But as Lupin seems to be a magician when the mood strikes. Elementary. Incomprehensible yet again. Nay, Watson, this letter talks of painting, amongst other things, and I bet Lupin wants to gain some time by having a strolling around London, but this time I anticipate arriving at the site of the next theft before he does. Watson, you're spent. You must rest this morning, and I'll take care of this alone. I'll come back to collect you around eleven o'clock. I must find something that resembles the description given in the poem. Hello, gentlemen. Judging by the calm, our little ploy regarding the mildew has worked. Indeed. As long as it doesn't work beyond our expectations, and we will get our visitors back when we reopen. So, have you found the fighting temeraire? I must confess not, but we are making progress on the case. Farewell, gentlemen. St. Catherine of Alexandria by Raphael, painted around 1507, one of the greatest Italian painters and architects of the High Renaissance. St. Catherine of Alexandria by Antonio de Solario in 1514, originally part of a triptych. St. Catherine of Alexandria, painted by Carlo Crivelli, bought as part of the Prince Anatole Demidoff collection in 1868. St. Paul on Malta by Adam Elsheimer. 1578 St. Catherine of Alexandria 
in good company, painted around 1450 by Stefan Lochner, a hand shutter of an altarpiece presented in 1863 by Queen Victoria at the Prince Consort's wish. St. Catherine of Alexandria, in good company, painted around 1450 by Stefan Lochner, a hand shutter of an altarpiece presented in 1863 by Queen Victoria at the Prince Consort's wish. St. Catherine of Alexandria, painted by Carlo Crivelli, bought as part of the Prince Anatole Demidoff collection in 1868. St. Catherine of Alexandria by Antonio de Solario in 1514, originally part of a triptych. St. Catherine of Alexandria by Raphael, painted around 1507, one of the greatest Italian painters and architects of the High Renaissance. Portrait of a Young Man in Red by Dominique St. Catherine of Alexandria St. Catherine of Alexandria by Raphael Portrait of a Woman by St. Catherine of Alexandria, in good company, painted around 1450 by Stefan Lochner, a hand shutter of an altarpiece presented in 1863 by Queen Victoria at the Prince Consort's wish. I have no reason to go there. Do you have another clue, Mr. Holmes? As for the investigation, I have the names of four artists who may have paintings on exhibit here. Oh, I am feeling weary. And out of sorts after all of the commotion, and I am not able to help you any further. The museum, however, is all yours. Thank you. Farewell, gentlemen. Here's what I've been looking for. And here's St. Catherine of Alexandria by Raphael. And here's St. Catherine of Alexandria. Here's what I've been looking for. Here is St. Catherine of Alexandria by Solario.
Here's what I've been looking for. It's St. Catherine of Alexandria by Crivelli. Here's what I've been looking for. Look, a Lochner entitled St. Catherine of Alexandria. There, I've made note of the four paintings indicated in Lupin's poem. I shall return to Watson and we'll put our heads together. Holmes has left at last. I'm worn out, but I have no choice. I must take advantage of his absence by recovering his legion of honour. I'll make haste to the bank and then attempt to find the crooks to whom I pawned it. There, I've been able to gather a sufficient sum of money. Now to the Golden Lion. Couldn't pay attention. Closed. Tell me, my good man, do you remember me? Last night I was in the next room where I pawned an object that I have come to buy back. Where can I find those concerned? Just where do you think you are? In the Duchess's front parlour? If there ain't nobody, it's cause there ain't nobody, and I don't know no more than that. We don't ask questions here, we drink and shut it. It's a scandal. You'll hear from me, Mr... Why, Doctor, what lucky happenstance. Have you recovered from last night's temper? Oh, hello there. <clears throat> it's lucky that I have found you here. I've collected the amount necessary to buy back the medal that I pawned yesterday. You look like someone who might know the ruffians who were holding the bookseller. Do you know where I could find them? <laughs> you aren't serious, I hope. I don't know them any better than you. Earlier in the evening, I had them round in hopes of gleaning a few morsels, but that's all. I had thought that you, like me, had bluffed, and that your trinket wasn't worth a knicker. By this time, it has certainly been melted and sold as bullion. At best, it's still in the window of a pawnbroker's. What are you telling me? You're going to tell me where I can find these rogues and the medal. Otherwise, you'll find yourself in the thick of it, because I've got friends in high places. I do. Why, Doctor, you're acting like a common thug. I, who have done everything possible for you... You must excuse me. I do apologise. How could you know? I seem to have lost my usual aplomb. This case is dragging on, and to top it all off, I have lost my friend's medal. Don't worry. I've seen worse. As for your head, it's sleep that you need. Your ideas will be much sharper after a rest. Impossible. My friend will be returning any moment, and then we'll end up I don't know where in London, in order to stop... Ah, but I've said too much. The men who have the medal, is there any way to find them? Maybe, but I'll have to call in a few favours, and that takes time. And money. I have a hundred guineas. Will that suffice? That should do the trick, but I can't guarantee anything. In any case, I'll do all that I can, I promise you, to help retrieve the medal. Thank you very much. I'll get to it immediately. But don't forget that you owe me one. Or free, rather. Ah, Watson, I thought I'd be dragging you out of bed. Oh, ah, I was summoned to visit a patient. Obviously a hypochondriac. Eh? Oh, uh, yes. How did you know? Otherwise, you would have taken your medical bag along. Ah, yes. By Jove, you are clever. As for the case at hand, which must be our priority, we must find to which treaty is referred in the latest message from Lupin. I just came from the National Gallery, and I think we have all of the elements necessary to formulate an answer. What do you think, Watson? The Treaty of Alexandria. Exactly, Watson. Would it not be the one following our victory over Napoleon Bonaparte? Undoubtedly, Watson, but we need details. I'll go see Barnes. His store wasn't open when I arrived, but it should be now. Rest for a while, and I'll be back soon. With pleasure, Holmes. Oh, 
hello, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> what can I do for you? Good day, Barnes. I'm looking for a book that deals with English victories and the subsequent treaties, the Treaty of Alexandria in particular. You'll have to excuse me, but I am already run off my feet this morning as I need to relabel some of the books. I'll leave you to look for yourself. There must be something in the history shelf near the back. I found it, Barnes. I'll take it. <laughs> Fine, Mr. Holmes. You'll settle up later? You see, it's quite a rare book. Quite dear, too. Day, Mr. Holmes. Good day, Rufles. I've got a message for you, I have. Direct from the yard. I'm supposed to bring you to Inspector Lestrade quick as can be. There's going to be a right important meeting there is. The PM himself will be there. For once, Lestrade is ahead of the game. Listen, Rufles, in order to save some precious time, will you bring a message to the Inspector? Tell him to meet me here with as much of the force as he can muster, but he must be discreet. Do you understand? Right, Mr. Holmes. I'll be off, I will. Thank you. Let's head to Baker Street. Up, Watson. It's time. The wave. No! It will engulf me! The, the tentacles! Ah! Come, my friend. That's all finished and behind us. Compose yourself. We have an appointment in half an hour with the Prime Minister. I'm still dreaming. The Prime Minister. Here's our next destination, Watson. The British Museum. Come on now, make haste. We're ahead of the game at the moment and we want to remain that way. How do you do, Prime Minister? Lestrade. Mr. Holmes, despite the intelligence and the perspicacity far above the norm that all of England is bestowing you, I assure you that you are a thousand leagues from imagining to what point I am, let's say, annoyed. Inspector Lestrade here will only give one answer to all of my questions. Ask Sherlock Holmes. So, Mr. Holmes, where are we? A few days ago, July 14th to be exact, we received a letter from the ubiquitous Arsene Lupin. It is here for your perusal. Is this in earnest? The facts concur. We are in our third day, and he has honoured all of his engagements to date. Even in recent history, this type of preposterousness would have led to war, do you know? Well, Mr. Holmes, all of this is too grievous to be left in the hands of an unofficial detective, no matter what his talents are. From here on, you will be working with Inspector Lestrade. You will be under his authority, and he will report to my cabinet. I am going to call a council of war, and I want you to know that no matter who you are, all contact with the press is categorically forbidden and will be punished in exemplary fashion. Gentlemen, these damn French I should send in the fleet. My dear Lestrade, time is pressing. I don't see anyone here about. Is the museum closed? No, but as there is work underway, and most of the galleries are closed, there isn't a crowd. 
That's fortunate. Lestrade, listen well. Clear the museum of all visitors and workmen. Block the entrance and post some men around the building. No one is allowed to enter the British Museum from this point on. As for us, Watson, let us assure ourselves that Lupin's next target is still within these walls. Wait. I have a map of the British Museum that the guard gave me. It could be of some use. <laughs>